Hey guys, I'm Tom the Tech Chap, and this is the new iPhone 14 Plus, the big brother of this guy, the iPhone 14. So the question is, should you buy the Plus, or maybe is the 14 a better option? Now there are three main differences between the 14 Plus and the regular 14. The first being pretty obvious, the screen size, 6.7 inches versus 6.1. The Plus has the same screen size as the 14 Pro Max, albeit in a much lighter package. This is actually 40 grams lighter. Number two, the Plus has a bigger battery and also the longest battery life. Spoiler alert for my big battery rundown test, but the 14 Plus wins. And finally, number three, the price. The 14 Plus costs £100 more than the regular 14 at $849 or £949, which makes it quite expensive, but not that much more if you're already tempted by the 14. So the 14 and the 14 Plus share the same design. We've got this glossy back as opposed to uh, the matte finish on the Pro models, which I do kind of prefer. I think it looks a little bit more premium. Also uh, aluminium rather than stainless steel. But one thing you might notice about this, or in fact any of these iPhones, is that I have one of these, a SIM card tray, because in the US, all these iPhone 14s are eSIM only. But here in the UK, there's not a whole lot going for us, but we do have a physical SIM card tray. Now I've been using this for a few days now, and I really, really like it. Yes, it misses out on pro features like the 120Hz ProMotion, which if anything is actually more noticeable on this bigger screen. It uses the A15 chip rather than the A16, there's no fancy dynamic island or lock screen, nor do we get Pro RAW or Pro Res with the camera. And of course we miss out on that higher megapixel main lens and there is no telephoto. All new 14s get these slightly thinner bezels versus the 13s, nothing really between them in terms of the uh, Plus and the Pro Max here, except of course for the notch and the dynamic island. It is kind of tricky to show you the difference in the refresh rate on a video like this, which is at 60 FPS. Using this regularly and then going to this, I do feel it is a bit slower, uh, especially at this bigger screen size, I think it's more obvious. I think for the price, we should have 120 Hz uh, given the Android competition, but it's not a reason not to get the Plus, I think. So it goes without saying that if you can stretch your budget to the 14 Pro Max, then go for it, it's a better phone. But if you just want a big screen iPhone that lasts a bloody long time, and you don't quite want to pay that much money, then this is a really interesting option. I am a bit sad we don't have a new 14 mini, although the 13 mini is still on sale, but then my complaint there is that the battery isn't particularly good. And to be fair, I think the 14 Plus is filling a whole new niche of its own. So if you're coming from an iPhone 11, 12, 13, or even 14 for some reason, uh, you're gonna get a 20% larger display with the 14 Plus. Going back even further, if you're still on the 8 Plus with those chunky bezels and the Touch ID home button, then you're looking at a 30% larger screen, which is a big difference. Everything is bigger, and I think better. Watching videos, gaming, even for accessibility if you have trouble with your eyesight, for example, you can adjust the text size where you can bump it up to make everything easier to read. And with accessibility mode turned on, you can double tap three fingers to zoom in on the interface. Now, of course you can do that with any iPhone, but the bigger screen on the 14 Plus just makes everything even easier to see. And alternatively, if you keep everything at its default size, it means that you get more on the screen, more messages, more emails, more text in an article. Even things like composing a photo or video is a little bit easier on that bigger screen. But then on the flip side, it does make it a lot bigger. It's definitely a two-handed device and you do notice it in your pocket. If you're someone who likes to wear skinny jeans, probably not for you, although maybe I'd suggest you give those a rest anyway. What I would suggest though is getting a case because this is quite slippery and if you are trying to reach for the top of the screen with one hand, it can be a little bit dangerous. So get yourself a case. Uh, I've got one here, which of course does add to the overall bulk a little bit, but then because it's a lot grippier, actually I think it ends up feeling more comfortable to hold. And you'll also know I've gone for the color matched purple case with my purple iPhone 14 Plus. If you're wondering how it compares to the deep purple on the Pros, more than ever, it really depends on the light hitting it. And the Pro actually goes from sort of black to purple, depending on if it hits the light just right. This is a much more kind of baby pink. I prefer the deep purple personally. 
This was a big surprise for me, just how much lighter it is than the 14 Pro Max. 203 grams versus about 243, 40 grams lighter. And in fact, it's a couple of grams lighter than even the 14 Pro with its much smaller 6.1 inch screen. So as much as I do love my Pro Max, and this is my everyday phone at the moment, I do kind of wish it was as light as the Plus. How have they achieved that? Well, essentially we've got the dual rather than triple a camera module that saves a bit of weight and I think most importantly we've got aluminium versus stainless steel. So we get a bigger screen but the other big advantage is battery life. Now Apple's marketing has been a little bit vague about this as they've called it the best battery ever on an iPhone yet if you compare the specs on the website in some cases like video playback the Pro Max lasts longer. Basically that's because the Pro and Pro Max have Pro Motion, so the screen can adjust between 1 and 120Hz, so for pure video playback it can efficiently drop down to 30 or 24fps, which saves battery. However, in my big battery rundown test, the 14 Plus came out on top. The basic iPhone is solid, but the 14 Plus lasts a good 2 hours longer, which in the context of this quite intensive test is a big difference. And so for the first time in years ever, maybe the Pro Max, the top most expensive version of the iPhone, doesn't necessarily have the best battery. This does. The only minor downside is that this takes about five minutes longer to charge than the regular iPhone 14, simply because it has a bigger battery. So we're looking at like half an hour to get to 50% on the 14 versus 35 minutes. Not a big deal. Okay, let's talk about this camera. And in fact, I'm recording this on the selfie camera, the true depth camera on the 14 plus, which is exactly the same as you get on the Pro and the Pro Max, including support for autofocus now. The big differences though are on the back. We have two lenses, the uh, main and the ultra wide versus the three on the Pro models. There's no telephoto. So in the camera app, you can see on the Pro models, you have a lot more options. You've got the new two times mode, which uses a crop of that new 48 megapixel main sensor, uh, and also a three times telephoto lens, dedicated telephoto. Whereas on the Plus, we just have a one times and 0.5 times. You can also pinch in up to a five times digital zoom if you want. And compared to the five times on the Pro, Definitely sharper and less noisy on the Pro, but not a night and day difference, to be honest. Another thing to note is that the ultra wide on the Pros uh, doubles as a macro lens. However, on the regular 14s, including the Plus, the ultra wide does not double as a macro. So you can't get any of those super crisp close ups, unfortunately. But while the setup is the same as the iPhone 13, we do get a brighter f1.5 aperture, we get larger pixels, and a slightly wider field of view. And of course, the new and improved Photonic engine that does all of Apple's camera processing wizardry behind the scenes. Also, the upside of this coming out a few weeks later than the rest is that Apple's actually had a chance to fix a few bugs, like that uh, camera shake issue that we had in some third-party camera apps. Also with the camera, I do find the 14s as a whole can come across as a bit over sharpened in some images, but aesthetically it's still one of my favorite cameras. And to be honest, the main reason I miss the 14 Pro and the Pro Max is that three times telephoto because I love the focal length you get for portraits. And of course being a proper optical zoom means that it's much higher quality than the digital zoom that you get on the 14 and the Plus. What you do get, which is the same as the Pro models, is cinematic mode, which you can record at 4K, 30 and 24 now. Uh, obviously the quality of the lenses on the back will be different, but for selfie, cinematic video should be the same as the Pros. I do quite like it. I love the fact that you can adjust the aperture before or after filming, because I think the default f2.8 is a little bit shallow. It makes you feel like a bit of a cardboard cutout. But if you change it to f3.5 or f4, it looks a lot more natural. It's pretty good. I actually like this a lot. Make sure you have subscribed though, because I've got a big Pixel 7, S22, and iPhone 14 camera comparison coming very soon. So the 14 Plus does a lot right. Big screen, incredible battery, surprisingly lightweight for its size, and it's only 100 quid more than the regular 14. However, while it is a good amount cheaper than the Pro Max, in the order of about 200 pounds or so, at 949 pounds, this is still a very expensive phone. It's like S22 plus money, which makes it a little bit unforgivable that we're still limited to 60 Hertz and also only a dual lens setup. Most phones at that price are high refresh and triple lens cameras. I'm not too fast on missing out on the A16. The A15 with its five core GPU is still insanely fast, but I really do just wish we had that 120 Hertz ProMotion. That's all I want. 
So I think this is going to be incredibly popular because the main reason I recommend the Pro Series, particularly the Pro Max to my friends, is for that better battery life. But you can get it on here and save a bunch of money. Now I would also say that if you're not, you know, glued into the Apple ecosystem, then maybe consider the Pixel 7 Pro or the upcoming Galaxy S23 series, which will probably come out late January. So those two are worth considering, but for my money, I reckon this is the new best iPhone for most people. Uh, do stay tuned and make sure you've subscribed because I have a big iPhone 14 series buying guide coming very soon where I'll be comparing, well, all the iPhone 14s, makes sense. So what do you think of the 14 Plus? Tempted to get one or not really for you? And actually, if you are thinking maybe about waiting till next year for the 15s, what would convince you to upgrade? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time right here on The Tech Chat.